My name is Annie. I live with my husband Jay and a black cat as a pet, Pepper. I have known Pepper since I brought her home when I was single, so we have been together for about five years now. There was nothing wrong with my marriage, but the relationship between Jay and his parents was bothering me. He was raised by his father very strictly. No video games, no TV. He was not even allowed to hang out with his friends. Because of this lifestyle, he never made any friends. Until he met me, he had a very dark personality. It was two years after Jay and I got married that my father-in-law, who was such a strict man, passed away. He collapsed suddenly when he was eating breakfast, and he's gone then. It's not that my mother-in-law served him something for breakfast. My father-in-law used to take the medicines for hypertension. The doctor said he had a myocardial infarction caused by his hypertension. When my father-in-law passed away, I asked Jay if he was doing okay. For some reason, he had a smile on his face. No one can stand in my way anymore. <laughs> The face of Jay and the way he muttered while looking at the portrait of his father, it was quite creepy. No matter how bad a parent he was, don't you think it's normal to show at least a hint of grief? To be honest, from that moment on, I became afraid of Jay. It was as if he had become a different person, like he was possessed by the devil. That kind of fear. Then a week later, after the funeral of Jay's father and finishing various other formalities, Jay changed drastically. Jay had gambled away all the money we had set aside for our home. Don't you want to live in a mansion? When I tried to warn him, he yelled at me, and I was so horrified by his change that I couldn't stop him. Sure enough, all the money we had for our home was wiped out. I was shocked, but decided to hope that this would wake Jay up. But reality was not so sweet. Apparently, Jay could not forget the pleasure of gambling. He even started to spend our living expenses. He was completely addicted to gambling. He would only bet on the biggest jackpot. Saying that the crazier the better, he never hit the jackpot. And even if he gambles on the high probability one, sometimes he never won. Jay didn't have the slightest talent for gambling. By the way, don't tell him that the number I predicted was the winning number. Jay is a salesman for a big company. I work from home and live in my in-laws' house since my father-in-law passed away. After setting aside some savings for the future and for living expenses, the rest of our salary was free for each of us to spend as we please. But ever since he put the money saved for our new home into gambling, he started putting his hands in all kinds of money. My wallet too, of course. Gambling addiction will improve if people around control it thoroughly. That's what the book said. So I tried everything that seemed to work for Jay, but when I told him I will manage the housework finances, since we would suffer if we took our living expenses, he yelled at me and refused, saying, "You're going to steal my money, you thief." When I explained to him about his gambling addiction, he was furious and threw the remote controller at me, saying, "I'm not insane. I'm normal." When he threw the remote controller at me, it almost hit Pepper, so that I evacuated Pepper to my room. Then he started yelling, "So your cat is more important than me?" And no matter what I said to him. He wouldn't understand about gambling addiction, and moreover, he threw things at me again and again, and I realized there was nothing I could do. Gambling is more important to me than you. 
If he says something like that, you would think so too. It had been six months since my father-in-law passed away, and my mother-in-law was completely unaware of Jay's situation. It seemed that Jay was lying to my mother-in-law that he only gambles with his allowance. He was trying very hard not to show his bad side, especially to his mother. To Jay, his mother was the only person who will spoil him and heal him. She was the complete opposite of his father. If my father-in-law was the devil, my mother-in-law was the angel. I think he wanted to avoid being hated from her, but I didn't want him to use me to avoid being hated from her. Actually, my mother-in-law said to me today, Annie, Jay told me, but you shouldn't complain about every single thing your husband does. A wife should. Obey to her husband without complaining. She kept on and on about it. But mother, Jay is always saying terrible things to me. I'm his mother, so I understand everything about Jay. He's a sensitive boy. He never said terrible things, but because of you, he had no choice but to say them. My mother-in-law was so sarcastic. When I was about to say. But it's necessary for his gambling rehabilitation. Well, I think you're overreacting. You should allow him to gamble a little. You don't know anything because you just stay at home. But men have social life. Jay used to gamble once a month to relieve stress. You should stop meddling. Oh, and you should level up your housekeeping skills instead. I check your room from time to time. It's so dusty. No one could live in a place like that. You're a lazy wife. Did you go into my room without telling me? Is that why my work tools are missing? How can those things be work tools? You don't even have a job to begin with. My son said you're a stay-at-home parasite. I've explained to Jay that I work from home. I've even taken him to meet the people I work with. He even talked to them and greeted them, and he calls me a parasite. Does gambling addiction even make a person lose his memory? Besides, everything in this house is mine. I'm free to throw it away or sell it. If you don't want to be evicted, don't disobey me. Before I could set anything back, she left with a big smile on her face. When my father-in-law died, she changed. She became more devilish, mean, and bullying. When I complained to Jay about it, you call my mother a thief. Are you going to use that story as an excuse to beg me for things? You are wicked, bitch. He won't believe me. He just yelled at me. Why did I marry such a man? Why did I put up with him and not abandon him? This thought was growing stronger every day. And when I finally discovered that Jay had even gotten his hands on my savings, something snapped inside me. I'm getting a divorce. It was the only way. If I continue to live like this, I would be doomed to hell. But I didn't think they would let go of me so easily, of someone who they could just treat like a nice housekeeper. I couldn't imagine that they would simply nod their heads when I asked them for a divorce. Just when I was hesitating, someone unexpectedly came to my rescue. Hey, Annie, I have a favor to ask you," said my mother-in-law in a coquettish voice. To say the least, I was sickened. "Will you divorce Jay? Of course. You're a parasite with no money. How about one hundred thousand dollars?" says Alimony. "Divorce with Alimony." I thought I was dreaming, so I scratched my arm with Pepper's fingernail. It hurt. It wasn't a dream. I can understand why you don't want to leave Jay. 
He's the husband you loved, but you know what? I've never forgiven you. You were always trying to get Jay's attention by making me the bad one, but you're not good enough for Jay. Jay is tired of you too. He says that you spend the money he saved together for the house, but you spend it all on your own. What? I couldn't say anything. He blamed me for spending the money. But Jay said he'll forgive you since he has a big heart. But I can't forgive you. So I'd like you to accept the one hundred thousand dollars, on the condition that you stay out of our lives. I almost screamed that he was lying about the whole thing, but I didn't think my mother-in-law would listen to me. I was racking my brains, thinking if I could just let it all go away like this. Hmm, I have an idea. Maybe I could get a divorce with alimony and just give these two a hard time. Besides, if it's my mother-in-law's opinion, Jay wouldn't deny the divorce. For what the angels say is absolute. I understand, and I will gladly accept your offer. I can't thank you enough for also considering my future. I forced a smile on my face and bowed to her. Then, under the leadership of my mother-in-law, the divorce proceeding so smoothly completed. All of my savings were used, but thanks to the unbelievable alimony, I got my money back. I got a note from my mother-in-law about the alimony, just in case. But I'm relieved to know what the money was transferred to my account right away. The source of this one hundred thousand dollars was probably my father-in-law's inheritance, but it didn't matter to me anymore. I rented a room near my office and started living with my cat Pepper. It has a walk-in closet and a loft, which I had always dreamed of. I even added a catwalk to the wall, and Pepper and I are overjoyed. The power of money is incredible. Now that I have taken the plunge and rented a nice room, I can now spend my days in peace. My ex-husband and my mother-in-law are gradually fading from my memory. I wish I could just forget about them, but I know that won't happen. Four months later, I got a call from my mother-in-law. Annie, why didn't you tell me? Please help me. I was shocked to hear my mother-in-law's voice, which was weaker than I had imagined. I regret kicking you out. Please help me. My mother-in-law began to explain the situation. The reason my mother-in-law wanted a divorce in the first place was because my ex-husband told her that I would rather live with you than a wife like that. I'll take care of you for the rest of my life. My mother-in-law, who loves her son more than everything, immediately agreed and prepared a large sum of money so they could get divorced as soon as possible. After the divorce, they immediately started living together. She didn't know that Jay was a gambling addict. From now on, I can take care of the family finances. He asked her to put all the family assets under his name. I am so blessed that I have a good son to take care of me. Besides, this house was going to be inherited to you, anyways. There would be no problem if I change the name now. My mother-in-law nodded as if to say no problem. She didn't know that it was the worst possible choice. My ex-husband started to show his true colors as soon as the name was put in his name. For starters, he took out a real estate mortgage using his parents' house as collateral. He used money to gamble again. It was only yesterday that my mother-in-law found out about it. She received a forced closure notice from the lender and found out about it. What the hell is this? He asked my ex-husband about it. Oh, that! I used it to gamble. You got a problem with that? He replied just like that. She then asked Jay a lot of questions. 
apparently, he had mortgaged his parents' house to pay off his gambling debts, but he used the money to gamble again. Jay said, "If I won all at once, I'll be a millionaire." The horse is undefeated so far. There was no way he could lose, so he put all the money in, and then. At the last minute, the horse fell down, and the most unlikely horse won the race. This horse had never won a race before. It is said to be the biggest miracle of the century. Jay was a natural-born loser gambler, too stupid. He repeatedly defaulted on his payments, and it had been more than six months since his last payment. My mother-in-law was horrified to find out that he had spent every penny of her husband's inheritance, savings, and salary that he had. In addition, Jay said, "It's okay, Mom. Next time, I'll earn money from bicycle racing instead of horse racing. So, give me the rest of Dad's inheritance." That's what he told her. When my mother-in-law replied that the money was almost gone due to my alimony, Jay was furious. Why did you pay her alimony without telling me? And one hundred thousand dollars? If I had that much money, I could have doubled it by gambling. He was very rude to her. My mother-in-law contacted me and asked me to return the one hundred thousand dollars. I can't do that. I have a note. Can you do something about it? We were a family. <laughs> please, please. My mother-in-law cried and pleaded it with me, but her tears wasn't worth a penny. I'd even filed a claim for mental anguish instead. I don't care what you say. Please work hard and pay back. I tried to hang up the phone, but my mother-in-law's attitude changed drastically. You can't talk to me like that while your family is desperately asking you for fever. You cold-blooded person! You should feel sorry for us and at least think about it a little. I sighed deeply. Hmm. You know what? I have pointed out his gambling habit to you many times. You were the one ignored what I said and make fun of me. That's. <gasps> This wouldn't have happened if you believed even a little bit of what I said. Look, this is all your own fault, you know. That's because I didn't know. I didn't know that gambling addiction was that serious, and I would have at least listened to you if you would have insisted. Yes, it's all your fault. Take responsibility. That's the kind of mother she is. That's why he grew up like that. You two are really alike, you know. You can't even tell when your son is lying. You're a real joke, and it's your son who gambled away your savings. Did I use it? It was all your son's fault. He deserved it. Thanks to you, we're strangers now, so you have to take responsibility for your family. My mother-in-law. Perhaps intimidated by my attitude, became silent, but she still haven't given up. All right, fifty thousand dollars. All I have to do is pretend that you stole it from me. Then we can sue you and get back to one hundred thousand dollars. You know, this call is recorded just in case. I knew you were going to say something like that. Besides, I have a note. Wait a minute. You're going to sue me to get back the one hundred thousand dollars. Why don't you give it a try? Maybe you can win. Do you have the money to sue? Shall I lend it to you? Okay. Oh, you've become a monkey. Then I guess I can't talk to you anymore. Goodbye. After that, my mother-in-law went to a lawyer's office for advice, but I heard she was turned away at the door. Consult with us for free. You can pay the cost for suing. That's what she was trying to tell him. Of course, she would be turned away. A few days after the phone call, Jay asked me to get back together with him. He no longer had anything to put up as collateral, and he was completely behind his payment. 
I heard that some men in black suit were visiting his house every day now. The house had been sold, and they had to move out in a few days. Jay, who has no money, has nowhere to go. Even if he escaped, he would be caught by the men in black suits. So I want you to hide me. He also wants me to pay his debts. I told him he could ask his co-workers for help. The man in black suit started visiting him at work. The company found out that he was in debt. Jay, who still can't stop gambling, he was fired for disturbing the public morals of the company. He had a small severance pay, but he used it in gambling again. He's really a hopeless person. Hey, let me live with you. I apologize for everything. Don't mock me. I know what you're up to. You just want to gamble with my money. No, I mean, huh? I can't help it. Tell me where you are now. Huh? I'm in a um playground near my parents' house. Debt collectors won't be able to find me here. Okay. Well, don't move from there. I have a gift for you. After I said that, I hung up the phone and started making calls to a certain place. Then the debt collectors found Jay. He was taken somewhere in a black car. He would have loved my gift. This whole mess started when my father-in-law passed away. Just one person's absence was enough to change the people in my parents' in-laws' family. Was it because my father-in-law was such a big part of the family? Or maybe this is what happens no matter who is gone. I'm sure that eventually I will get married and start another family. I will make sure that my next husband does not become a gambler. I will try to make sure that I have a decent mother-in-law.